here? Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm the founder of a company called 10 Minute Media. We're a digital agency that does a lot of work for the music industry, so building websites, marketing tools. Uh, how did you start your adventure with creating websites uh, for music business? Well, I started building websites when I was 11, 12 years old. And uh, one thing led to the next with clients getting larger and larger and larger. Um, so around 13 years old, uh, my favorite band had a competition open to their fans to design a, an interactive flash promo for the new album. And I won, convinced the band to let me do their website. And uh, that started to generate a lot of attention over my work. And uh, before I knew it, major labels, uh, major entertainment companies were contacting um, me and 10 Minute Media to take on digital media projects for, for their musicians and releases and tours and other uh, marketing initiatives. Uh, what big stars, what big brands have you been working for? Um, I do a lot of work with EMI, Sony, RCA, Clear Channel, Warner Brothers, Universal. Uh, How about the celebrities? Like I said, um, Mick Jagger, Katy Perry, Lenny Kravitz. Uh, recently started doing some work for Foster the People. Uh, Jimmy Cliff, who's a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame reggae artist. Uh, I think there's like a, a DJ here, a beatboxer. Not, I'm not doing work for that for that uh, musician, but. Uh, 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 Van Morrison, I did Van Morrison's website, uh, Natalie Cole's website. Uh, no Polish artists yet, but hopefully, you know, hopefully someday soon. Working with celebrities helps growing a business. Well, absolutely it does. Um, there's the aspect of you're designing something and then instantly the audience is there. So when you're building something for a brand that already has major brand equity and recognition, the moment you post it, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of eyes are on that item. So, for instance, when you know Katy Perry makes makes global news or announces a tour, millions of people are going to a website that that my company uh, designed and developed. So that aspect is really golden. It's a beautiful thing for getting a, a lot, you know, a lot of focus on something you're creating. But what are the disadvantages of working with, with such people? Um, with, with some celebrities, um, you're dealing with um, a clash of vision. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a professional uh, in my field, you know, there are certain best practices that you adhere to. There are certain design principles that you adhere to that some celebrities just don't, un don't understand. And I, th I think that, you know, that's all right, and, and it's something that you grow to, to learn to deal with, and uh, you make compromises, and uh, I, I guess those would be some of the disadvantages. But they're not really, it's not really that bad. I'd say the advantages outweigh the disadvantages by far. The differences between Polish and American entrepreneurs, um, there's really, uh, I mean, more and more and more over the years, the differences are are disintegrating. I mean, you go to uh, a meetup in in Krakow, and it's the same as if you're going to a meetup in Boston. You go to a meetup in Warsaw, it's no difference, no different than going to a meetup in uh, New York City. So meeting people is the, is the same, but the money. From my understanding, um, talking to various uh, entrepreneurs in Krakow, there is a there is a decent. Uh, Angel, uh, you know, angel investor community here in Krakow, and I think a couple of venture capital firms, and then there's uh, what Seed Camp and Bar Camp and different resources like that. Um, but I would imagine it would be more difficult, just on a per capita spending basis, to raise capital in Poland as compared to in Boston, New York, Silicon Valley. Um, it's just, it's just a numbers game, and I think that uh, for uh, for a country of its size. I mean, Poland, Poland's doing quite well on the entrepreneurial side. From what I've read, they have the highest, one of the highest entrepreneurial indexes in the, Europe, in the European Union. So that's, things like that are really encouraging. And uh, the fact that even today we saw um, Yarmir's uh, company being, f um, being uh, invested in by Aaron uh, Patzer of uh, Milk, or sorry, of Mint. Sorry, the beatboxes are, the beatbox is throwing me off. But of of mint is incredibly encouraging for the future of Polish entrepreneurship. Uh, have you seen Have you seen any ideas in Poland that would, you you would like to uh, adapt in uh, USA? 
Uh, the, I mean, the U.S. market's really not about taking what you see internationally and adapting, you know, adapting it to that market. Because generally, when people are launching companies in the U.S., they're launching it for the for international scalability. So they they want that product to be seen internationally, used internationally. Um, whereas, from my understanding um, here. Uh, a lot of people are trying to build local or hyper-local um, products and then after having successes in that area, grow it to other countries. And I think that's just because of the, it's kind of like an English-speaking world versus other countries aspect that uh, it's probably not unlike neighboring countries. Uh, I don't know about mental differences, it's just it's probably a lot more easy to test something in your in your native tongue, your native language, your native market, and then try to adapt it. Or I've, I've seen, I mean, how many Polish uh, local deals, daily deal sites are there? Probably infinite, but same in the U.S. Everybody's replicating each other's ideas. So it's kind of not a definitive, definitive thing. How have your life changed uh, thanks to the business you run? Before before starting a business, uh, I, I kind of talked about it in my in my presentation. I would have been you know a cartoonist, and um, so the difference between being a cartoonist and, and being an, an entrepreneur uh, with a you know with a successful company with clients that I love working for, with um, you know it's it's quite a lucrative business to be in. I mean that's completely black completely black and white. I'm, I'm so satisfied and content with where I'm at and uh, you know I couldn't even imagine at this stage what my life would be like without you know having chosen to be an entrepreneur. Uh, would you have changed anything in your career? A absolutely, absolutely. I mean one of the things, uh, one of the elements of starting a business quite young is that you make a tremendous amount of mistakes. When I started, I was making so many, you know, so many poor decisions. I didn't have a mentor um, for my business. And then around 18, 19 years old, on an event in Boston, I had one of my business plan competitions kind of like, not torn up, but certainly um, scrutinized and you know looked at under a, you know under a microscope and and uh, is really frightening that I was making all of these mistakes. But these entrepreneurs in Boston, um, you know, said we we're really interested in what you're doing. We'd like to help you if you have any questions. Feel free to shoot us you know shoot us your question. Give us a call. Meet up with us. So I had a couple uh, you know shortly after I had a couple of meetings with them. And they just kind of set things straight in a row, like, you really need to be paying more attention to this, to that. We think that you have a lot of growth potential here. Um, so the advice that they gave me was extremely, uh, extremely valuable. And, um, you know, that's something I would have changed earlier, is finding those mentors early on, finding people to uh, talk to, those resources. Thankfully you know college uni colleges and universities and different um, entrepreneur startup groups have those resources publicly available but when I started 10 years ago you know when I was 13 uh, that wasn't the case do you think that without uh, committing the mistakes uh, you would be here where you are now um, if I didn't make those mistakes if you didn't yeah I, I mean I think ultimately I would progress to I mean, perhaps I'd be more naive um, having not made mo those mistakes and you're always better off making those mistakes earlier on let's say less significant projects than making those mistakes later on when you're talking about big brands, big contacts, big contracts and um, that can really taint your uh, relationships and your reputation in whatever industry you decide to pursue. So uh, I think that would be the difference uh, if I didn't make those mistakes is maybe, you know, I'd be here, but I'd be thinking about things completely different. I wouldn't have those experiences. I wouldn't have learned from those failures. What do you plan for the future with 10 Minute Media? Well, I plan to keep growing 10 Minute Media as much as feasible, um, but in the next month or so I plan to launch more of a product, a software as a service product um, that works with the music industry, mobilizing, basically taking 
uh, artist websites and creating an instant mobile uh, version of that that works on all smartphones, is lightweight, has better user experience than if you, let's say, go to an artist website from your iPhone and then be, you know, kind of uh, upset that it doesn't operate the way they're looking for. It takes you a couple minutes or the load time's too long. So this will basically simplify all of that content into what looks like an iPhone uh, application. So that's, that's something that will be my first uh, product that I'm introducing um, that I'm really, really excited about. So I think that will be something to look out for in the future. Are you going to expand your business? Um, I deal with I deal with that often. Um, you know, there was a point, and there still is a point where the music industry is volatile and going up and down, and music sales are uh, declining, and there's a bit of uncertainty in that industry. Um, so, so from that standpoint, you know, to have a buffer in other industries is quite a smart direction to go in. So I have a couple. Uh, corporations, clients that I work with that aren't music related, um, but I still have you know a majority focus on music because that's my niche market. I'm known in that industry. The last question: How do you like the internet beta here? It's been a it's been a great a great event. I've met some incredible speakers. I've listened to some great presentations. Um, thankfully, there's a there's a translator, so I have a headset on and get to uh, hear, hear everything in English so I fully understand. Um, but I've been, I've been really impressed. From my understanding, it's, it's the largest or one of the largest internet uh, digital conferences in, in the country, in Poland. So, uh, you know, I'm really excited to be here. I hope to see, you know, I, I wish Internet Beta all the successes and future growth. And, you know, maybe it will be double the size next year. And uh, you know, the more the more energy that we can create in any place, you know, in, in Poland, the more energy we can create in Poland, that's a great thing. The more energy any city can create or any country can create about the internet and entrepreneurship, collaboration and innovation, um, you know, that's 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 excellent. That's a great path to be on.